Today, my brother, my sister, I'm taking you on a journey to Freetown right there in Sierra Leone. And I'm going to talk about a woman whose life is going to blow you away. One of the women of independence of Ghana. Remember the series we started? We spoke about Ama Nkrumah. Oh, we spoke about Rebecca Nadede. Rebecca Nadede. Lord God have mercy. Today, my brother, my sister, we are talking about a woman whose life is about to blow you away, sweep you off your feet. If you are ready, I am more than ready to introduce into the African history class the woman who was born four years ahead of Kwame Nkrumah. He had became one of the most powerful allies of Kwame Nkrumah. Hey, a very powerful woman who was born in 1905. She lived so long, she passed on in 1984. My brother, my sister, Mabel Dove Dangwa. <laughs> Mabel Dove Dangwa. Mabel is spelled M A B E L. Dove is D O V E. Dangwa is D A N Q U A H. My brother, my sister, Mabel Dove Dangwa was born to a Ghanaian mother and a Sierra Leonean father. And if you are ready, let us go deep into the annals of history. Hey, in 1905, she was born circa in Accra, Ghana. Oh my God. And her father who was all the way from Sierra Leone. He was a lawyer. In fact, a lawyer from Sierra Leone who was the first president of the Gold Coast Bar. My God. And listen to this. Her mother was called Mabel Elian. I uh, beg your pardon. She was called Eva Buckman. Eva Buckman. Mabel Elian Dove was her full name. And she was born in Accra to Eva Buckman, who was a businesswoman in Osu. And Francis Dove, who himself was a Sierra Leonean lawyer and at the same time the first president of the uh, Gold Coast Bar. My brother, my sister, she started off her education at a very early age. In fact, she was taken to the Un uh, Walsh Memorial School in Freetown, Sierra Leone. And there she excelled. Later, she was taken to England to further her education at the Anglican Co Convent in Bury St. Edwards. And when she went there, she continued to Michelle's College, oh my God, in England. And then she took up a secretarial course. And when she picked it up, her parents were not happy because they wanted her to also come out as a lawyer. But she was more interested in secretariatship. Oh, my God. And there she was. She read all the books in her free time. She read all the newspapers. Oh, my God. And she did her work very, very well. Today, we're talking about Mabel Dove. Oh, my God, have mercy. Mabel Dove. <laughs> Mabel Dove Dankwa, my producer, is going to put a photograph of Mabel Dove Dankwa so that you'll see exactly who we are talking about, my brother, my sister, this beautiful black woman. Now, here, what happened now? Now, she became a secretary. Hey! And then the very first newspaper in the Gold Coast came into being. And it was called mm, 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 the Times of West Africa. The Times of West Africa. Hey, this was a very powerful newspaper. And who founded the very first newspaper of the Gold Coast? J.B. Dangwa. Joseph Boachi Chirichie Dangwa. Yes. J.B. Dangwa was the one who founded the very first Gold Coast newspaper, and it was called Times of West Africa. Times of West Africa. Mabel Dove Dangwa became, oh, an editor of the newspaper. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And by so doing, she became the very first female editor of a newspaper right here in the Gold Coast. Today, this is the person we're talking about she wrote for the newspaper. And then, interestingly, she got married to J.B. Dankwa in 1933. So she became J.B. Dankwa's wife. Oh, my God. And the romance started. Pam, she got pregnant and gave birth to a son by name Vladimir. Don't look, son, 
Interesting. Now it is most interesting to realize that JB Dunqua's child or son was called Vladimir. At the time that he was busily preaching Pan Africanism, he chose a Russian name for his son. Yes, my brother, my sister, this is what we're talking about. No two weeks about them Tinder man. Now hear me, my brother. Hey, we have so many things to talk about today, and I need you to come along and deal with this issue. Today we're talking about Mabel Dove Dunqua. She became the wife of J.B. Dunkwa in 1933. Interestingly, oh my God, interesting things happened. They had a child called uh, Vladimir. Yes, Vladimir. Yes. So see what happened now. Now J.B. Dunkwa was busy. He was not in Gold Coast. He was in England. And over there, he was working very hard on the Gold Coast Independence and some other side things in England. And the woman could not stay lonely just like that, especially that they had just gotten married. And what did she do? She asked for divorce. And the divorce happened in the 1940s, my brother, my sister. Now, while she was working for J.B. Dunkwa's newspaper, hey, she moved from one newspaper to the other newspaper, from one newspaper to the other newspaper, until she came to Kwame Nkrumah's newspaper. And which one was Kwame Nkrumah's newspaper? It was known as the Evening News. My brother, my sister, the Evening News. Now, the Evening News newspaper was a very big newspaper, and it was founded by Kwame Nkrumah. Remember when Kwame Nkrumah founded the Convention People's Party in 1949? They needed a voice, and the Accra Evening News became the newspaper. She became an editor of that newspaper and also a columnist writing and editing the newspaper. It didn't take long before Kwame Nkrumah started disagreeing with her. He didn't like her style of editing the paper. She wanted to edit in the British way. Nkrumah wanted it to be edited, in fact, in the eyes of the African. But her training was all British and she was approaching it in the British style. Kwame Nkrumah wanted it in the African style. She told Kwame Nkrumah point blank, I was not trained in Africa and I do not know this kind of editing that you want me to edit this newspaper that is the African style. Can you give me an example? Well, in fact, they argued on and on and Kwame Nkrumah took her off the editorial of the newspaper. Oh my God. See what happened now, my brother, my sister, as the newspaper was... Uh, uh, still going on. Hey, this wonderful black woman by name Mabel Dove Dankwa was taking off it. And see the interesting thing that happened. Hey, interesting things. I'm telling you, interesting things. And when I say interesting things, believe me, we're talking about interesting things. Watch this thing now. Hey. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody would have said, once she broke away from Kwame Nkrumah, she will stay away from the CPP and also stay away from Kwame Nkrumah. After all, she was staying away from Kwame Nkrumah's newspaper, the Accra Evening News. Gosh! But this was when she even got closer to Kwame Nkrumah. And even when the UGCC had disagreements with Kwame Nkrumah and Nkrumah broke away in 1949, of course, all that time, she had already met J.B. Dankwa, worked for J.B. Dankwa's newspaper, and at the same time, married J.B. Dankwa. Remember, they got married in 1933, long before Kwame Nkrumah even came um, to be part of the UGCC. But she didn't look at it like that. In fact, after she divorced J.B. Dankwa, she got closer to Kwame Nkrumah despite their disagreements. She was a very, very, very radical feminist. She believed in women and wanted to push women into every single corner. Hey, she will fight every man. She was raised a feminist. Oh my God, Kwame Nkrumah loved it. But Kwame Nkrumah did not like a style of editing the newspaper, as you were told. So, she was removed from the editorial of the newspaper. Mm -mm -mm. And she moved on to become a very solid figure in the CPP. Look at what she did. She moved from the organizer, in fact, to almost everything in the party. 
she and Kwame Nkrumah traveled to so many different places. Hi! From 1949, she became a staunch member of the CPP. Oh my God! She joined the campaign trails. And in no time, when there was self-government in 1957, something interesting happened. But before independence, the general election of 1954, oh my God, she put everything in it. She was committed to organizing women for the CPP and was subsequently put up as a CPP candidate for the rural uh, constituency, which she won. And when she won, Oh my God, in 1954, she became the Ghana Rural Constituency uh, MP, Member of Parliament. Her election made her the first female member of the Legislature Assembly. In fact, the first member of the Legislative Assembly of the Gold Coast. Such a great black woman. <laughs> She had writing in her DNA. She loved to write, even though she was no longer the editor of the Accra Evening News. Founded by uh, the CPP's Kwame Nkrumah, she still wrote in her private time. Sometimes her articles were even published in the Accra Evening News. See what happened now. She was such a prolific writer over a period of four decades. She published a number of books, including collections of short stories. And these ones include The Happenings of the Night, which was published in 1931, before she married J.B. Dangwa. The Adventures of the Black Girl in her search for Mr. Shaw. Oh my God, in 1934. Remember her British background? Of course, she believed in the Mr. Shorts, Mr. Hendricks, and all those names more than the Kwekus and the Kwamis, at least initially and in Gold Coast times. She also wrote Anticipation in 1947, The Torn Veil in 1947. And the same 1947, she published a third book called Payment. Hey, in 1966, the year Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown, she published The Invisible Scar and The Evidence of Passion in the same year. Oh my God, she wrote and wrote until she became blind in 1972. When she became blind, she couldn't write anymore, neither could she read. She now had to take over a new form of education, totally. Braille. You know what it means to say Braille? Braille is the system of writing and reading of the blind or visually impaired. In 1972, the year Kwame Nkrumah died, she went totally blind and she could no longer write. One of the greatest women we have seen in our history. She stood solidly behind Kwame Nkrumah. She went with Kwame Nkrumah on several campaign trails. Oh my God, she was responsible for organizing the women. She was a strong feminist. And she had the support of the women who were around Kwame Nkrumah. Yes, she had disagreements with Kwame Nkrumah, but she still was solidly behind Nkrumah. And she believed in the vision of independence. She never joined hands with the UGCC. Neither did she join us with her former husband, J.B. Dankwa. She was solidly behind Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah CPP pushed her to become, oh, an MP. In fact, a member of the Legislative Assembly of the Gold Coast in 1954. Three years later, self-rule or self-governance came into being. And there she was. She wrote and wrote. In a year, she could write three or four books. 72, she went totally blind. And she was incapacitated. She couldn't write anymore. Oh, oh. In fact, her work is anthologized in so many circles of Ghanaian literary works. And you can find her books all over the place and read them, including her collections, including um, some of those that were published when she died. My brother, my sister, in the Langston Hughes collection of African writings and essays. Today, my brother, my sister, I have the singular opportunity to introduce to you this great black woman of a Gold Coast and Sierra Leonean parentage, born in Osu, Accra, to a businesswoman and a lawyer. Her father wanted her to be a lawyer. She ended up being a secretary, an author, a powerful politician, 
a woman who forged ahead with Kwame Nkrumah to give us independence. She died, my brother, my sister, when she went blind in 1972. She couldn't do much, and her life was cut short in 1984. My brother, my sister, when she died at the age of 78 or 79, today we remember you. We also remember her younger sister by name, Evelyn Dove, who was a powerful singer in Creole. I'm talking about Sierra Leone and Creole or Pigeon. She also had a brother by name, Frank Dove. We will find time in the African history class and talk about all these wonderful people. Today we remember you, mommy. She died in 1984 at the age of 78 or 79. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, 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 Oh, mommy, mommy, bye-bye, yo. Mommy, missy, bye-bye, yo. Mabel Dove Dankwa never got married again. She remained that feminist, never ready to succumb to any man, not in marriage or any such thing. My brother, my sister, when she died, she was celebrated all over. Today we celebrate you. Mommy, when you died, I was only 10 years old. Mommy, when you died, I didn't know about you. Mommy, when you still walk the earth, I didn't know too much. But today, we remember you, Mommy. Ode amigo. Mommy, me say bye bye yo. Yeah, mommy, damn it, Fadio. Mommy, damn it, Fadio. <laughs> yeah. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, how will the story of Mabel Dove Dankwa impact your own life in contemporary times? The first female to edit a newspaper the first woman columnist of the first newspaper in the Gold Coast. The woman who chose to follow ideologies rather than personalities. Oh, mommy, Dove Dankwa. Now that you know in the burden of knowledge, what would you do? Be an any or lay a mini or buffet, ye zunda kagane, me zaka yine, ye and papango, bokaya nun, fifia yenya, no kaina wo, banayehu, a bay a den, lele and jima, zinga bekone, eh, zua lele and jima, zinga berry, our mammy. Too, 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 too